Now we have created our gate, we have a nice way to check whether a user is logged in or not and change the application depending on whether they are actually logged in. That gives us a good way to start the protection or application, but it doesn't give us any more control based on the user's role. So in this video, let's look at how we can create some methods on the user model and then also create some custom middleware and some more gates so we can actually start restricting access to our application based on a user's role. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is create some methods on our user model that we can then use to check if a user has a role or not. So under app models, and I'm going to open up user.php. So I'm just going to come down to the bottom of this user model. And if some people are particularly having problems with the editing of a user and then them not being able to log in, we're going to look at that in the next video. And that is down to this set password attribute that we've got on our user model. So we're going to switch this out and we're going to use something called Laravel Fortify Actions. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get a notification of when that video goes live. But for now, just underneath our roles here, I'm going to create a new public function. I'm going to call this has any role. And this is going to take in a string and we're going to give this a variable of role. So what this function is going to do it's going to check whether the user has the role that we're checking for. And if it does, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return a null. And we can do this all in one line. And we can say return null. And then we want to check against the database whether the user has this role or not. So we can say not equals to. And we want to check the database now for this role we're passing in. So because we're working in the context of the user model here, we can just say this. And that refers to this current logged in user. And then we can get our roles relationship here. So we can say this user's roles. And then we want to say where the name column has the role that we're going to pass in here. And then we just want to get the first one of those because we're only checking whether the first part matches. Because as soon as it's got a match, there's no point in carrying on through the rest of the database. And that's how easy this is. So now of any logged in user, we can call the has any role method that we've just created and we can pass it in a string. So we could pass it in, say, admin here. And then what this will do is this will call our roles relationship for the current logged in user and it's going to check the name column and then it's going to check whether that role we passed in, in this case, admin. And if it does, then that is going to equate to true. So it's going to return true. But if it doesn't, then it's going to return null. So that gives us a nice way to just check whether a user has a role or they don't. Now, this is a good start, but it doesn't give us much flexibility if we want to check whether a user has a certain role or another role, for example. So maybe we want to check whether they're an admin or an author, and we want that to return true. But if there are any other role, we want it to return false. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to copy this function down. and I'm going to change this from has any role to has any roles. And this time it's going to take in an, an array. Now the problem is this where method that's built into Eloquent is only checking for a string. So this array that we're passing in won't work and it'll throw an error. But that's okay because Laravel Eloquent has another method called where in, which does take an array in. So all we need to do here is after the where, put in. And then what this will allow us to do is pass an array in here. And it's going to check whether anything within that an array is in the name column. And if it is, it will return true. And if it doesn't, then it will return null. So you can see how super easy that is now to start checking our application for the roles. So I'm just going to add some comment box in it up here to explain these functions a little better. So I'm going to say here, check if the user has a role. And this role here is a string and the method returns a boolean of either true if this is true or null. And then same for this has any roles method. I'm just going to create some comments here. I'm going to say check the user has any given role. And this role here is going to be an array. And then what we can also do is type in these inputs. So that gives us a bit more type safety in case anyone tries to pass in something that they shouldn't. We can type in this to string. And then on the has any roles, we can type in this to an array. So this just gives our application a little bit more protection and also helps other developers that come along so they 
understand better what needs to be passed into these functions. So now we can start using these methods anywhere in our application to check whether the user has the roles or not. So over in our auth service provider, and that's under app providers or service provider. I'm just going to come down to the boot method and I'm going to create a new gate here. So I'm just going to copy this one down here that we defined in the previous video. And instead of logged in, I'm going to just going to call this one is hyphen admin. Again, we're going to pass in the user here. And then instead of just returning on the user, and we're just going to call that new method we created called has any role and i want to know whether this user that's currently logged in has the role of admin so let's jump over to our user controller and just try this out so over in app http controllers admin user controller let's just go up to the top of this and in our index method so you see here we're currently dying dumping on our logged in gate if it denies the user access or not like I said, normally you'd probably just do a redirect here with a flash message rather than just dying dumping out. But this is just an example to show you how it works. So I'm just going to create another if block here. And this time I'm going to say gate. And instead of denies, I'm going to do the opposite. And I'm going to say allows. I'm going to say, does this gate allow? And I'm going to say, uh, is admin gate? And if it does allow, then I'm simply going to return the view and then if this if check doesn't work it's going to drop down here and i'm just going to die and dump out here i'm just going to say you need to be admin now this will only show the admin users index page if this gate allows so if this check passes so it's going to use our is admin gate and our is admin gate is going to call our has any role method and it's going to pass in the string admin and then on our user model, it's going to check this current user. It's going to go to our roles relationship. It's going to check where the name column in the database has the role we're passed in, which is admin. If it does, it will return true. If not, it will return null, and that gate will fail. And if that gate fails, it will just die and dump out and say you need to be an admin. But obviously, in a real-world application, you'd probably just redirect to somewhere else. But if it does pass, it does the gate does allow it's going to return our view to the admin so let's just try this out in the browser now so i'm currently logged in as a user with admin privileges so if i just give this page a refresh you can see that still allows me in so what i'm going to do now is just quickly create a new user that doesn't have the admin privileges so here I'm just creating a new test user and I'm only giving them the role of user. So if I just hit submit on this now, as you see, that's created the new user for us. Now I'm just going to open up a new incognito tab and test this out. So over in a new incognito tab, let's just log in as that newly created user. I'm just going to hit the login. And then as you can see, our initial gates are working because this user is now logged in. They can see the users list. But if I try and click on this now, it should die and dump out because this user is not an admin. Let's just click that users link. And you can see there now this gate has failed. So this user is not an admin, so it's not allowed them access. And here, like I say, instead of dying and dumping, you'd probably redirect to somewhere else in your application with a flash message saying you don't have access to this page. So now we can control in our application where a user can go and what they can see using the roles. So I'm just going to hit the back button. And now I'm only going to show this users link based on the current logged in users role. So over in our main.blade.php file, I'm just going to scroll down to that link. And you can see here, we're already calling our logged in gate. So this link is currently only shown for logged in users, but we're going to do another check to make sure they are admin as well. So just here outside of the LA, I'm going to say can, and I'm going to say is admin. So is this current logged in user passing the is admin gate? And then I'm just going to end can here and just save on this. Now let's have a look in the browser. So in my incognito window, I'm just going to hit refresh. And you see now because this test user is not an admin, they no longer see the admin link. And then if I come back over to my logged in user that is an admin and just give a refresh, 
you can see they can still see this page and they can also see the user's links. So that's how we can control access to parts of our application, checking the user's role. So although I've not got a practical example here to show you, I'm just going to show you how to use the has any roles method instead. So if you come over to the auth service provider here, and instead of calling has any role, I'm just going to copy this line down and comment this first one out. So you've still got it in the code if you want to download the code at the end of the series. And instead here, I'm going to say has any roles. And then this is how you'll do it. So you create an array instead, and you'll say maybe admin and authors. So now this gate will pass if the current logged in user has any of these roles, so admin or author. They don't need them both, they only need one. And then this gate will return true. And you can carry on here, you can just keep going. So maybe you want access for admin authors and just generic users, for example, and then this gate will pass. So I'm just going to comment this out again again now and return back to the simple admin check because that's the one I'm going to be using through the rest of the video and I'll leave this commented out here in the code so you can use it and you've got an example to get working with. Now we have a nice way of controlling the methods and denying access to users based on their role and also hiding elements within the user interface using the CAM method. So this is good for now, and we can carry on using these gates and we can put them in each of these methods in the user controller, but that's gonna get messy quick and it's a lot of and it's a lot of repeated code. So let's create a custom middleware for this that we can just apply to the entire admin root group. So back over in my terminal, I'm just gonna create this middleware now. So I'm gonna call a PHP artisan make colon middleware now you can call this middleware whatever you want whatever makes most sense to you i'm going to call mine access admin now over in the project if we come under app http middleware we can see we now have this access admin.php file so in here we can see in the handle method all we're doing is simply returning the next request so it's not actually doing anything at the moment. It's just running and then just returning the next request. Now let's put in here our gate to check whether the user is an admin or not. So over in our user control, we've already done this. So I'm just going to grab this piece of code. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it in here. And then instead of returning a view here, I'm just going to remove this and I'm going to return the next request. So if our gate is admin passes, then return the next item in the request cycle. And then don't forget, if your ID hasn't pulled the gate facade in here, then up at the top, make sure you bring in use illuminate support facades gate. OK, so that allows the user passed if they are an admin. And you might want to check whether there is actually a user logged in at this point. But I like to keep my middleware doing one job and one job only. So for this to work, I would always have to check whether a user's logged in first with the auth middleware and then check whether they are an admin secondly. So I'm going to leave that up to you, but I'll show you what I mean when we apply this to the roots in a moment. So if that gate does allow the so if that gate does pass, they are an admin, then it'll send them on to the next request. But if it doesn't pass, then let's just redirect the user back home. And then what I'm going to do is just return a redirect here. And I'm just going to redirect back to forward slash. So now we need to apply this middleware to our admin root group. But firstly, we need to let Laravel know that this access admin middleware exists. So over on the app, HTTP, I'm going to open up kernel.php here. I'm going to scroll down to the root middleware. And you can see here, we have the auth middleware that we applied to the root group in the previous video. So I'm just going to follow this convention here. So on the next line down, I'm going to register our new middleware. I'm going to say auth, and then I'm going to say is app. And then this is going to run the app HTTP middleware, and it's going to run our access admin middleware that we just created. So now we can apply this middleware to our roots. So let's open up our web roots again. 
And we can see down in our admin root group, we're already applying a middleware here of auth, but you can pass in an array here instead, instead of just a string. So I'm going to turn this into an array. I'm going to say, apply the auth middleware first. And this is what I was saying. So I'm checking whether a user is logged in first. And the reason why I like this is because it's just doing one thing. It's just checking whether that user's logged in. And if they aren't, it won't go any further. So after this, I want to then do the auth. I want to do the is admin middleware that we've just created. So now this chain of middleware will run. It'll check whether the user's logged in using the Laravel's built-in auth check. And then if they are logged in, it'll then do our custom middleware and check if the user is an admin. So let's just try this out in the browser. So logged in as our admin user here, this shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. So if I just give it a refresh on this page and I go to the create user page, you can see I can still access all of these pages. And over in our incognito tab, if we just try and access the admin users create page and just hit enter on this, you can see that just redirects us back to the index page. So now we've protected our entire admin dashboard. Firstly, we're checking whether there's a logged in user and then we're also checking whether the user has the admin role. So now any routes that we put into this root group here, we know they are going to be protected. So only the logged in users with the admin role can access them. So in the next video, let's look at tidying up our user controller. So I've showed you how to create users from scratch directly into the database. And we're going to change that out. And we're going to be using something called the Laravel Fortify Actions. So when we install Laravel Fortify, it creates a number of actions for us. And one of those actions allows us to create users. So we're going to hook into that create user action. So we can use Laravel 45 throughout our entire application for registering and creating users.